There are over 6.3 billion human beings in the world, and the number is growing by an average of 90 million every year. Planet Earth affords us the very finest of its resources. In fact, that's why we're now able to enjoy the healthiest and most abundant food we ever have throughout history. However, for nearly three quarters of the world's population, obtaining sufficient sustenance remains an arduous daily challenge, one that doesn't always have a happy ending. Human intelligence now finds itself confronted by one of the most urgent challenges it has ever faced, the need to develop the means of assuring abundant food sources with adequate nutritional value for each and every one of the many species on Earth. The Earth is humanity's support system. It's where we carry out our daily activities. It's where we obtain food, clothing, and shelter. But for how long? At the beginning of the 20th century, there were 1.6 billion people in the world. By 1960, that figure had risen to 3 billion. In other words, in just over 40 years or so, the population had doubled. Evidence shows that it will redouble this century. By the year 2025, there will be some 8 billion mouths to feed. And by 2050, there will be over 10 billion. It's not easy to predict what might be called Earth's load limit, the number of human beings the planet can sustain. But it has been proven that we don't know how to feed 6.3 billion people despite producing as many as 2,700 calories a day for as many as 12 billion individuals. For quite some time now, humanity's management of its food resources has been recognized as decidedly insufficient. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization provides annual detailed reports on the matter. Consider, for example, that for the same cost of producing the 250 grams of meat in this hamburger, 50 people could eat a nutritious plate of cereal. And if this hamburger meat came from a cow in a tropical country, its basic upkeep probably rendered at least five square meters of land essentially useless. There are currently about 1.28 billion cows in the world. Around three quarters of them live in the southern hemisphere, while practically all of the products their owners send to market are eventually consumed in northern industrialized countries. It is a fact, however unpleasant it may seem, that with the cereal products fed to livestock, millions of human beings could satisfy their currently unmet nutritional needs. In short, the lack of food that assails a vast majority of Earth's human population may be the direct consequence of excesses perpetrated by the remaining minority. When we talk about food, there are two basic problems that humanity faces at this point in time. On one hand, there's hunger and the diseases caused by the concomitant lack of basic sustenance. On the other hand, we're also seeing an explosion of what might be called luxury diseases. Not only obesity, but bulimia and anorexia as well. So while we're seeing a decreasing trend in hunger, a slow drop to be sure, but a drop all the same, both in absolute and relative terms, Obesity is increasing at a rapid rate and is becoming a major medical issue in communities throughout the world.
In fact, some of the so-called luxury diseases are listed as leading causes of death in the developed world. In contrast, somewhere in the world, a person dies every two seconds from malnutrition. Researchers estimate that every human being on Earth could be adequately fed by products cultivated on land the size of South America using modern technology. Currently, we farm about 10% more than that, and many agricultural experts assert we are practically at the limits of the planet's productive land capacity. Towards the end of the 18th century, an English economist named Robert Malthus posited a discouraging theory. He predicted that the Earth's population would increase geometrically, while food production would increase only arithmetically. Those predictions could not have been more dramatic. He calculated that in three centuries' time, about now actually, it would be essentially impossible for 99% of the planet's population to obtain enough food to survive. He was wrong, of course, for despite having an exceptional capacity for deduction, Malthus couldn't possibly imagine the incredible scientific and technological advances that would be applied to agriculture and animal husbandry in the centuries to come. And it is almost certain that science and technology will continue to provide advances in these fields in the future. Near-term nutritional studies are based on a wide range of variables. But there is a consensus on one thing. Economic solutions are a key factor. For it does little good to rely on resources that are not available to everyone. Regarding hunger, the technological challenges for the future are the following. Producing more per hectare and producing it in a more environment-friendly fashion. Since right from the beginning, over 10,000 years ago, traditional agriculture has negatively impinged on the world's ecological balance. In fact, early agriculture was more adverse than its modern counterpart, the opposite of what most people think. And there's no doubt that the environmental impact of food production must be understood as a function of each ton produced. Today, we can grow tons of food on less land with lower amounts of fertilizer, less water, and less energy than, say, 30 years ago. But we still haven't significantly improved the relation between production and population growth. If, say, 30 years ago, X amount of the earth were contaminated when you ate, say, a sandwich, today it's only half of that. But the population has doubled. The fact is the environmental impact of agriculture has only gotten worse, not better. At the same time, Human health has improved as a result of the development of new food sources. We now understand that eating well does not mean eating a lot or eating exotic products per se. Eating well means maintaining our physical well-being, providing the body with the essential nutrients it needs to develop and thrive. <laughs>